Hi guys, welcome to the final day of Impy Stout Week. And we're ending the way we started by going back over to Sweden and having a look at another offering from Omnipio. And uh, the reason why I'm picking this as the last beer is because it's an end of an era in of itself. I know that's not the proper terminology, but oh well. And uh, yes, yeah, so we're going to be looking at the absolute iconic classic. And one of the actually, no spoiled are they? You can see by the title, you can see by the thumbnail, you know what beer it is already. So why do I always play along with this? Like, oh, let's be surprised with what beer he pulls out. Uh, but yeah, this is probably one of those beers that is actually really quite, has been quite misunderstood um, by a lot of drinkers, um, and especially overseas, um, across the pond in America, which, you know, it's understandable because the imagery has uh, very poignant connotations uh, still now in the US. But a lot of people have been put off by this beer because they don't really understand the message. And I have already reviewed this beer, so I'm not going to go too much into detail. If you want to find out about that, then I'll put that link down below. But yes, yeah, so we're having a look at Yellow Belly. And as you can see, this is the ceased and assisted final batch uh, because I believe the brewery is called Bateman's and uh, there's been a little bit of a copyright infringement. I'm not too sure. I think I mentioned this in the Noah video, um, but I'm sure there's much more uh, better informed individuals than myself who can tell you about that situation. I think I ranted a little bit in that video, but oh well. And uh, yeah, so basically... Uh, this is the last time that they will be brewing Yellow Belly. Now, I'm sure they will bring that beer back or that recipe back under a different name uh, because it's a great collaboration, not only between Omnipolar, but of course, Buxton here in the UK. And um, yeah, so it, it just makes sense if the legacy lives on in a different name because it's a very solid recipe, very highly regarded. And uh, yeah, it's it's genuinely sad to see this go um, because there's a little bit of a theatre about it. And talk about beautifully presented. Um, just simple, gorgeous. I love the use of the hand-drawn Cairo font. Yes, I'm sad enough to know what font that is. And uh, yeah, so books done on the Pio. 11% ABV. So this is an Imperial Stout brewed with aromas of peanut and biscuit. And uh, yeah, clocking in at 11% ABV. Pick this up from... Um, do I really want to open the inside? Because I, I need to get a thumbnail of this. Um, and I won't be able to put it back together again. That should be okay. I've got a second bottle anyway. So uh, yeah, there's the uh, sort of uh, explanation um, about the, the beer and the theme. Uh, I will just quickly go over it. I, did, I said that I wasn't going to, but I am. Yellow Belly, a person who is without courage, fortitude, or nerve, a coward. Kind of sounds like me. To us, to us, to us, one of the most cowardly things or deeds is to act anonymously, hiding behind a group, a signifying trait of institutionalised racism. This beer is brewed to celebrate all things new, open-minded, and progressive. A peanut butter biscuit stout with no biscuits butter or nuts taste enjoy and don't be prejudiced uh, prejudiced yeah that's how you say that so hennick uh Afentia, carl grandine uh dennis johnston jake alsman uh jeff quinn and colin strange of course uh on the Pio and buxton there so a really it's a touching sentiment and it's really quite an important one especially in these uh socio-political times um in america but also throughout the world but uh, yeah no, we're not going to get bogged down into that we're going to celebrate uh, the world of craft beer and the unification of beer drinkers from all over the world and uh yes without any further ado let's get this open and see what we get just a simple silver crown there now i know omnipoyo and buxton did 
uh, brew a beer together um, sort of as a, as a response to the cease and desist. I can't remember what it was called, um, but all I remember is it's sort of like a hand-drawn image, black and white, of like a swash sticker being smashed. And again, a very powerful sentiment, especially uh, with uh, some uh, people theorising what's happening here in Europe. Anyway, and uh, yeah, racism is such a fucking dumb thing. Let's just put it out there. Racism is dumb. It's just fucking stupid. It makes no sense. And uh, yeah, if you're racist, you know what? You're entitled to your opinion, no matter how toxic, no matter how dangerous, as long as you don't physically harm or harass someone. You know, you could say what you want, but I'm going to think you're a fucking idiot if you're racist, quite frankly. And uh, I should be allowed to tell you that I feel that way. Just like you have these views on certain groups of people that come from no science, statistic, just a learned prejudice. So, uh, yeah, racists. Get a fucking grip. Anyway, so we're going to be using our Mikola Beer Club Blitz because I need to get Omnipoyo glass. I need to get some Omnipoyo merch as well. Mm -hmm. So anyway, let's see what we get with this. Uh, as I said, pick this up from Brewdog because uh, they were doing an event nationwide in all their bars uh, where you can actually have it on tap and they had bottles in the fridge. So uh, I, of course, had uh, a third. It was tasting magnificent. Uh, now, I will say this, when I first, well, the only other time I've reviewed this uh, was the 2018 batch, and it was a really solid beer, it was one of the, the milestone beers um, from last year, but because I was so engulfed in that sort of style, I think that it was almost, there were other beers that were getting my attention and exciting me, do you know what I mean? Uh, but revisiting this in Brewdog was just a wonderful experience. And uh, yeah, now I get to try it in bottles. So I picked up a couple of bottles. One to enjoy now for MP uh, Stout Week. And then one to, I know I'm not going to age it. It's probably going to go within a few weeks. But hey-ho, I tried. And if I fail, at least I fail with a, a hopefully tasty beer. Because uh, I drank it at sort of like a chilled temperature in the Brewdog bar. Um, but this is room temperature. And I've actually found some Imperial Stouts, because they are chilled, it almost tricks your brain as if you are drinking like um, a milkshake or a milk float or uh, chocolate milk sometimes. Uh, so, of course, some flavours won't be identifiable, but the texture, that chill, almost reminds you very much of dairy. And I think that works really well sometimes. Uh, with uh, Imperial Stout specifically. But anyway, I'm, I'm nowhere near a scientist. Um, I follow Peter Science. And uh, I think you should all follow Peter Science as well. Anyway, so beer in a glass. As you saw when I was pouring it, I hope I was pouring it on camera. Uh, it had a nice sort of slick to it. Not the gloopiest or glugliest. Glugliest. I'm very gluggly. Uh, not the gluggiest of Imperial Stouts, but still very satisfying. And uh, in the glass, it's just looking wonderful. Uh, that is pretty much jet black with just the very thin lining of uh, a mocha sort of head. Just looks fantastic in this shape of glass as well. Anyway, so let's see what we get on the nose after I spill some on the floor and uh, stain my fingers. Anyway, let's give it a sniff. Oh, that smells so good. That is really intensely biscuity. So peanut and biscuits. Yeah, you definitely get that synthetic Reese's peanut butter cup aroma. But there's a really intense dark biscuit character which smells wonderful almost has that sort of like um it's like if oreo did peanut butter cookies which they probably do because they do all sorts of different flavors that's what i'd imagine it smell like you get even like a little bit of like a crunchy bar honeycomb sort of vibe really dark dense brown sugar 
I mean, you could tell there's flavourings in there, but with beers like this, you don't really care because you kind of want it to be bombastic. And it's not always my cup of tea. I like things to be quite simple sometimes, but this is just... It's smelling like a, a children's treat at the end of the day. No detection at all of that ABV. But it's like this sweet, biscuity smokiness, which is just so inviting. It's like, I want the base of a cheesecake to smell like that. It's smelling absolutely wonderful. And I don't actually remember it smelling this way when I first had it. It's weird, I'm going to have to revisit my initial video of this, because... I do remember being blown away by it, but as I was saying, there was a lot of beers at that time that I was drinking uh, that just probably excited me a bit more. And I think I was like a little bit dubious of the hype that Omnipio um, were receiving, not going to lie. But that's because I didn't really have too much experience with uh, the brewery. But the more beers I've drunk by them of this sort of style, it's like, yes. Yeah, can they take it a bit too far? Do sort of beers not turn out the way they even want them to? Yeah, that happens. That's brewing. You know, if you were to brew consistently day by day by day by day, it becomes a mechanical process as opposed to um, an art form. So, yeah, you've got to have bad batches every now and then because you don't learn. So you've got to mess up. Not that Omnipoy have messed up royally or anything like that. But every brewery has, like, oh, we've had to bin this batch of what's its name. Didn't turn out the way we wanted it to. Got a little bit infected. We didn't want it to go that way. So we're not going to release it. Some breweries do release them and just say, oh, well, this is our soured stout. And it's like, it wasn't supposed to be a stout in the first place. You messed up. Just own up to it. Anyway, I say that like I can roll off the tongue of other breweries. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, this is just smelling fantastic, so let's give it a taste. Cheers, guys. Oh, wow. I tell you what, I do not remember it packing this much of a punch. I was saying that you don't really get that 11% ABV on the nose. You get it in the flavour. And it adds this almost like a textured grainy creaminess to the body I'll, I'll use this analogy a lot you know when you've got like a uh, mix like um, cocoa powder or drinking chocolate and you don't always mix it correctly so you get a little bit of like a uh, the the uh, the granules that haven't dissolved and it adds to the texture that's what i'm getting with these sorts of beers There's a really quite emphasised smokiness on this, which I was not expecting. This is even tasting different to, to when I was having it on tap. But again, it was chilled, so I, I wasn't getting stuff in that that I'm getting in this. And I know I won't get stuff in this than I was getting when I was having it on tap. But that's the way it goes. I'm getting like a really big coffee liqueur vibe about this as if it's like being sweetened with some syrups you're definitely getting that peanut butter by the bucket load and i think to get a good peanut butter flavor in beer you have to go down the synthetic route do you know what i mean you have to go down the like the sauces and the flavorings i mean if you're looking for a natural taste in beer you're probably going to want to avoid this one. This is all about, let's just be bombastic and put this into the beer. But it works beautifully. And it is literally like peanut butter biscuits. With maybe a little bit of a, a jammy quality, like a mixed dark fruits plummy jam spread on it as well. And it, it's very rich. It is rich ridiculously rich um it's not the abv and the warmth as you drink it that's going to make you take your time it's because of how intensely flavorsome it is and it's almost 
teetering on and being a little bit savoury. So I could imagine this being great um, as a sort of a prefix to a nice dense dessert or even going along with a really nice piece of beef. In fact, you could almost make a really big gamey gravy with something like this to get some really weird and wonderful flavours. Complement that with some herbs, a bit of garlic. I wonder if anyone's actually cooked with yellow belly in a savoury fashion. But yeah, this is... You could tell that they've gone big for this final um, farewell to... Uh, a really iconic beer in its own right. And uh, yeah, it's it's a fitting end to a week that, even though this is only the spoiler, I've only recorded two other videos up to this point. I'm recording day seven halfway through because I'm just really in the mood to drink this. Um, so far, it's been a great week. I've got some proper bangers lined up, which you will have already seen. And uh, yeah, just the Imperial Stout. Whether you want classic, old school Russian Imperial Stouts or maybe a lower ABV uh, dry stout, you're going off the Imperial Spectrum for a second. Or if you want to go to like the outrageously flavour engulfing void that is the sort of pastry stouts, then there's a hell of a lot out there. Uh, you know, you can age them on this barrel you can age them on that barrel you can blend them with this style of beer you can blend them with last year's batch you can just age them in just a normal barrel you know you can as we've seen you can ice distill them you can blend them with coffee herbs and spices fruits there's just so much you can do and when it's done right it's so satisfying and uh yeah I'm actually interested to hold off drinking my second bottle just to see if it does sort of um, just rain in a little bit and mature slightly because it is tasting a little bit young. Um, do you know what I mean? Um, I'm sure as this ages, you're going to lose a bit of that synthetic flavours, you know, those flavours that the beer is known for and is advertised as. But I could imagine this like really smoothing down nicely and actually gaining uh, complexities in areas that you wouldn't get drinking it fresh. But it's not like, oh, I'm drinking this way too early. This is a beautiful drinking experience. Don't you worry. And if you were lucky enough to get a few bottles of this and you've not tried it yet because you're holding off, save it for a special occasion. It's one of those sorts of beers. Uh, I'm recording this just on a Saturday night. I'm working tomorrow, but I'm going to be chatting to a few buddies on uh, on YouTube. So I want something nice to drink with uh, virtual friends. How sad does that sound? Uh, but yeah, anyway, so out of 10, I'm going to give it a 10. Uh, it's just tasting beautiful. Um, there's a little bit of poignancy there with it being the... Uh, yeah, the last batch of this and also being the last video so there's a bit of theatrics in that regard as well but um no this is absolutely wonderful is it my favorite omnipoya beer that i've had so far no i think the one beer and i need to get it again has that just that one beer that just completely blew me away was uh omnipoyo and sirens and including collaboration with dave strack and the home brewer and the i forgot what it's called Lorelei, that was just beautiful and I know they've re-released it and they've done some really nice aged versions on it. It's like, I want to get it. But sometimes these sorts of beers are hard to come by. And do you know what? Say what you want about Brewdog. For them to host an event like this for a beer and a brewery like this, you've got to give them credit where credit's due, no matter what you think of Brewdog as a brewery, their marketing, their beers. Hats off to them. I'm keeping mine on. Hats off to them for pulling off that event. And uh, yeah, I'm sure by the time you watch this, their stocks have depleted. But I'm sure there, there might be some online platforms and bottle shops that will still have, you know, bits and bats of this uh, final batch of Yellow Belly. Do yourselves a favour, pick up a couple, because if you like these sorts of beers you're going to really enjoy it. 
and my voice is starting to crack because uh, I'm actually only 13 years old. Anyway, there's just some parts of my body that makes it look like a 13 year old, but we won't go there. So yeah, if you've tried this in any of its forms, then let me know your thoughts been into what's been your favorite vintage. Uh, do you think the last beer has been a vintage? Do you think they'll carry on this recipe just under a different name? Uh, check out both Omnipio and Buxton. Uh, I think Buxton sometimes don't get the credit they deserve with the collaborations that they do with Omnipio. Um, and Buxton are an absolutely fantastic brewery in themselves. And uh, yeah, what a wonderful collaboration. And uh, it's sad that this beer is not going to be brewed anymore, but what a send off. Really fantastic stuff. And uh, thank you all for sticking with me for another a themed week on the Clueless Drinker channel. Um, as I said, I've only recorded three other videos, or two other videos, up to this point. So I hope you've enjoyed the other videos that preceded this one. And hopefully I enjoyed drinking those beers, because there's some beers that just sound fantastic. And I hope that comes across, uh, if they are fantastic, when I taste them, when I do it. So uh, yeah, what are some of your favourite Imperial Stouts in general? Is there a special type of Imperial style you like? Do you like them to be aged in like whiskey bourbon barrels or port barrels or aged on fruits, a, a, you know, blended like this with flavourings and that sort of stuff? Just hit me up in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for sticking with me. And uh, yeah, whatever you've been drinking uh, as I've been doing this series, thank you. And I'm uh, shaking my hips from side to side for no reason. And uh, yeah, I'm going to stop this now. Thank you guys for watching, and I shall hopefully see you all later. Cheers. I've got big ears down here.